10 o'clock. News this hour from townhall.com. I'm Michael Harrington. In Warren, Michigan last night, former President Donald Trump on the stump holding a Save America rally. He says nobody's talking about his administration's offer to provide military protection for the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. We authorized from 10 to 20,000, and it's in the Obama, from previous, the Obama Inspector General's report. And they turned it down, and they don't want to talk about The unselect committee doesn't want to talk about it. It's a complete scam. He also criticized the multiple legal investigations against him. He says they're all trying to keep him out of the 2024 White House run. Rescuers are still plucking some people off of barrier islands off Florida after Hurricane Ian came slashing through. The death toll now is 47. It's feared it might go higher. In the wake of Ian's devastation, Town Hall News and our companion network, SRN News, is partnering with Christian nonprofit relief agency Food for the Poor to send emergency supplies to victims in Florida and the Carolinas. Get more information at srnnews.com. The focus will be on the employment picture this week and reports from the government and private sector. We'll find out how the job market fared in September when the government releases last month's employment report on Friday. Prior to that, payroll processor ADP issues its closely watched jobs report Wednesday. Also due this week, updates on the number of job openings and a tally of the number of people who quit their job. Reports on construction spending, factory orders, and consumer credit Also scheduled for release in the coming week. Rich Thomason reporting. Russia attacked the Ukrainian president's hometown with suicide drones this weekend. Ukraine pushes back with its counteroffensive that has embarrassed the Kremlin. More on these stories at townhall.com. You were lied to in buying a timeshare and worn out, you need my help. Hi, I'm Chuck McDowell, CEO and founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started the timeshare cancellation industry by exposing the ugly truth about timeshare and giving folks the straight facts. I've been fighting the timeshare giants ever since, so no one knows this industry better than me and my team. Today, we have 383 employees and have saved our clients an average of $65,000 in lifetime payments. Imagine putting those timeshare dollars back in your pocket. If you were told in a timeshare presentation that this was available today and today only, that timeshare was a great investment, or your maintenance fees will never go up, call my office now. I guarantee if we take you as a client, we will cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call now for your free information kit. 800-687-7979. 800-687-7979. Amazon is raising its average starting pay for frontline workers from 18 to 19 bucks an hour. That could help it attract more employees in a tight labor market as the holiday season approaches. The company says warehouse and transportation workers will earn between $16 and $26 an hour, depending on their position and location in the U.S. The minimum wage at the Seattle-based e-commerce company, which employed roughly 1.5 million workers as of the end of June, will remain $15 an hour. Correspondent Jeremy House. Iran's parliamentary speaker warning today that protests over the death of a young woman in police custody could destabilize the country. He's urging forces to deal harshly with those he claim endanger public order. The speaker telling lawmakers that unlike current protests, which he says aimed to topple the government, previous demonstrations held by teachers and retirees were over important reforms. News and analysis at townhall.com. Police say five fatal shootings in California could be the work of one serial killer. At a news conference on Friday, Stockton Police Chief Stanley McFadden said, by definition, you could probably very well call this serial killings. The investigation is focused on a string of unsolved murders from last summer between July 8th and September 27th. All five shootings involved men between the ages of 21 and 54, and all were shot late at night or early morning when they were alone in areas that lack security cameras. The men were not robbed, and hate crime have been ruled out. McFadden told residents to be careful walking alone at night and be aware of surroundings at all times. Tasha Stevens reporting. Today is Sunday, October the 2nd, and some notable people are celebrating a birthday today, including movie critic Rex Reed, 84 years old today. Photographer Annie Leibovitz still snapping away at 73. Talk show host Kelly Ripa is 52. More on these stories at townhall.com. 
This Atmos weather report is being brought to you by Summit Technology Group. Summit Technology Group provides advanced technical solutions to the ever-evolving broadcast industry. More information is available online at summittechgroup.com. Your area conditions, currently 48 degrees in Rome. Here is your WKAL 1450 AM, 103.3 FM Utica Rome Metro weather forecast for Sunday the second day of October. I'm meteorologist Charles Dixon. Mostly clear in Rome, and good morning to listeners in Oneida, where it is currently mostly clear and 48 degrees. Getting down to 33 overnight tonight, Monday's high will be in the low 60s, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures in the mid-60s on Tuesday, sunny times of clouds and sun. A meteorologist, Charles Dixon, on 1450 AM 103.3 FM. WKAL More Stimulating Talk Radio. This is Coach Big C, and you're listening to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch on WKL you're listening partner that uh that's for you out there hopefully you're out there listening but uh we're going to be talking to coach decola in just a minute we'll spend a few minutes on this past week's game it was a beautiful night um at the stadium for homecoming the weather was fantastic the week before the proctor game that saturday the weather was fantastic yeah for that so knock on wood the weather has been has been fairly well so far for high school football again it's hard to believe that we're now what five games through yeah, five um, games in. And our field have three games left and then a, uh, a playoff game. So they'll be home this, this week against CBA, on the road at CNS, and they finish at home against Liverpool. Uh, so tough three games remaining. So we'll talk to Coach in just a minute. Um, but, guys, let's get let's get back because um, what, what's the score of the game? You got it up there. 7-0. 7 nothing. 7 nothing. 7 nothing. We're still. in commercial break right now. But um, I want to talk a little bit. Let, let's stay on the NFL here. We are talking about um, – Coaches and um, you know establishing something. What about Mike Tomlin? Hasn't had a losing season. They, they look really bad though this year so far. But they get the Jets today, so hopefully they'll get back to two and two. I'm a huge Mike Tomlin guy. They'll still go 500. And and I asked you guys this last week, and he still says Mitch, it's too early to panic, right? Mm-hmm. Trubisky's the, the guy. Yep. Do you wait six seven games in, and I if he's still not playing well, you go to you go to pick it. Yeah, I think uh, it depends you know, if you're winning. I, I think a, a lot depends on where you're at. I mean, are you winning? Are you in a playoff chase? Are you out of it? I mean, a lot of it de- depends on that kind of stuff. Um, right now, I think you wait. I think Trubisky's your quarterback going forward, and you know, realistically, hopefully for the rest of the year, because if he's your quarterback, that means you're playing for a playoff position. How about the Jets? What about him? Would, would you keep Joe Flacco? Not a chance. So you, you go back you as go, soon as he's ready. Uh, they, they exactly. Well, he's playing today, he's isn't playing, he? Yeah. He's as soon today. as he's yeah. ready, he's your quarterback. Regard, and that's the thing. Once you make that determination, you can't pull him and go to Flacco at some. Like he's got to be your quarterback the whole the rest got, of the year. Uh, I think we got Jake. Hold that thought on the on the. I can't believe we're going to talk about the Jets. I know. Anymore. What are we Let's really go doing? To Jake. Hey, coach. How are you? Hey guys, how's it going? Well, I just had to interrupt the guys because we were spending time talking about the Jets, and I can't believe we were talking about the Jets. <laughs> oh boy! So I had to. I said we got to talk to coaches calling in. So you're more important than the Jets. So congrats. At least I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, coach, it was another beautiful night. I don't want to jinx the weather because so far the weather this fall has been fantastic for football. It was another nice night, Friday night, 
And, you know, some good things, again, I know we keep saying some good things, some bad things, but let's first start, talk about some of the positives. Yeah, um, offensively, we kind of got our mojo back where the week before we were a little bit stagnant and didn't get really too much things going. Um, We moved the ball to uh, different playmakers this week, and a lot of guys on the outside, so see uh, our freshman Seracia and our other 10th grader, uh, Sejin, stepped up and made some big plays along with Jack and LeBron and Evan had a pretty great night. I think he was 23 of 33 with 300 yards. So you could definitely tell he, he keeps growing, and he has pressure in his face too. And he stood in there and made some great throws. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I said, you know, even with pressure in his face, he made some really nice throws stepping in the pocket. Um, and I thought you had some some key plays on the outside. Some of your skill guys you just talked about made some plays, but. I think you knew coming in um, throughout the week that that wing tee, they ran that wing tee very well. Yes, they do. I mean, they've been running that for ages, it sounds like. And um, so what's hard with that is if your guys are just a little bit slow, undersized, and a little hesitation, oh, they feed off that on that type of offense. You know, they, they love just to fire off downhill and to get that three yards in a cloud of dust. And it's really important. We try. It's hard to emulate during practice. But you try to get our guys to just be confident with their read and come downhill. But in a game like that, if they just hesitate just enough and get pushed back, it's a pretty big hole. Well, Coach, the uh, your your schedule doesn't get any easier, that's for sure. You go at defending state champs come in next Saturday, CBA, CNS, Liverpool. What's the message to the kids for the, for the, the remainder of the season? Well, I think the remainder is, is we still have, you know, there's always a chance. You know, you look a couple of years ago, we, you know, we shocked CNS when they came in. They were just coming off a Final Four team, and they actually went to the Final Four that year. We beat them, that no one expected, you know, to go our way. So it's just, you know, we got to still work on the basics, play with confidence, kind of get our, like, on offense, get our mojo back and just, you know, play downhill. You got nothing to lose, you know. You can go out there, give it all out, and you can go shock the world. See it all the time in college football, high school football. Just that one week, a team could be off just enough, and the ball bounces your way, and you're playing lights out that night, and anything could happen. So even though that they're state champ last year and they've been rolling, hey, it, it could be us. They could be coming in, overlooking us. They might have a, I forget who they play the following week. Um, and it's just week to week, you just keep telling them, hey, let's win that play, win the first or win the play in front of you, then win the next play, and then have it build up. Yeah, and Coach, it's, it's nice to at least be, be able to look at the schedule and say your next, what, two out of three games are going to be home, which is which is big. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this week we're going to try to do a teacher appreciation game um, for our, our, our varsity team, and then the following, uh, we go to CNS on a short week. We actually play them on a Thursday night, so we, we go Saturday to Thursday, so that's going to be a Ugh quick turnaround and then the last game we actually have our alternate jerseys and the seniors this year decided to do a breast cancer jersey so we're going to be honoring um doing a breast cancer game a pink out game and honoring some of our teachers and everything that have battled through it and won the battle well coach i thought you guys did a really nice job before the game started the press box was was named after ray tarkowski who's been there for a, a long time and um i as a, as a former alum, I love to see that, and I love the stickers you guys had on the helmets honoring uh, Coach Mize. That that was first class. I appreciate it, and uh, Carl Maganero helped me out with that. But he said, because um, I mentioned some of the stickers, he's like, all right, I can get on it real quick. And seasonal sports did a great job. You know, I never got the chance to uh, meet Coach, but just hearing all the stories and everything that he has done, I mean, I, I witnessed it firsthand with my grandfather when I go back to. Um, the old stopping grounds and going to a Cabasco game and just having his old players come up to him and just like yep. that look in his eyes of coach thank you for helping me become the man who I am today and not just about the football but just they always come up and have the most respect and that's what as a coach you kind of it's not always about the wins and losses you know it's about the relationships you build that players can come back and you know they want to tell you how they've been where they've gone you know when they're getting married, kids and everything, and they just have that respect and that relationship that they just, that's what they look forward to as a coach a lot. No, ab- absolutely, Coach. And uh, 
I know we'll uh, we'll talk again this week. Get your get your notes ready for uh, for the podcast this week. Oh boy! <laughs> S- study up, and uh, we'll talk to you this week. Yep, definitely. I'll be ready. You know, we have to make sure we have to take down C bus. He'll be he'll be bringing his A game. That's for sure. We know that. Well, I do definitely want to talk about this. You know, we might have to put in the podcast who would win in the fight, Jay or Seattle. You know. My money's on Greg Schiano. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> yeah, my money's on him. What would you think of that that fake punt? And then Ryan Day explained it was it wasn't a fake punt call. The punter just took it. I mean, there's a lot of times when I was a, a special teams coordinator in college, we would have that check in there. And, you know, they're college kids. Just say, I don't know what grade that punter is. But it, a lot of times if that guy's not coming at you, you have the green light to go. So if it's less than five yards away, and sometimes as a coach, you forget that. Oh, no, he's off now. Just punt the ball. We are ahead, fourth quarter. And that kid has probably been ingrained over and over and over. And he said, oh, there it is. There's that one chance. And he ran it. But he did pay the price. You know, oh, yeah. He was a hit pretty good with it. But, yeah. you know, it, I don't think it's too much of a dirty play. You know, they were up. He did not like they ran or threw the ball for a touchdown. But it was there, and he just took it. Well, he definitely took the hit and uh, took the fake punt, forty-nine to ten. Forty-nine ten at the time, but uh, yeah, Greg Schiano had some choice words, and, and Schiano was part of that Urban Meyer staff with Ryan Day. Oh yeah, so they probably had some words. I mean, but it wasn't like Day went out and said, "All right, we're going for him fourth down," and started chucking it and everything. So yeah, I'm going to probably say that Greg Schiano doesn't send a Christmas card. To Ryan Day at the end of the season, but <laughs> but I, but I no. could be wrong. But well, no, coach. Well, he might have took the picture in the beginning of the game when they were first time they ever were ahead of Ohio State. But very true. Year, so you know they probably took a big old picture of that, kind of hang it up in Rutgers and say, hey, at one point we were beating them. No, I I I would think so. And I I said this earlier. I think Rutgers is much better now than what they were in the past. I think you know Shiano's not going to take them. To a nine and three season, but I think they're much better than what they were. Oh yeah, definitely. I think you they'll get better. Always tell too. It's, look at the UConn. They were a, a program that was in last place, and this year they've actually won a couple of games this year. Beat Fresno but, State last night. Yeah. They stink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might have to add that to one this week. One last question: How many jerseys is Cody wearing today? Um, he's I've only got one. He's got one on today. Oh, Kayvon Thibodeau, he's... but. I've got the socks. He's got, too. Uh, oh, he's got giant socks on, too. Oh, socks. boy. Uh, all right, coach. Well, thanks for calling in. We'll talk to you this week. Sounds good. I appreciate it, guys. All right. Good all right, luck, Jake. You got it. There you go. Socks on. Dude, the jersey on. on him. Oh, boy. If this was around the horn, I'd be going boop, boop, yeah. boop, boop. <laughs> minus, you know, minus, I minus. I do have the, the mute option over here. Yeah. On, on the board. Bob. Um, Aren't you on the same mic as him, though? I am. That's why I can't. So you can't do that. I was going to (laughs) say, when everything broke, you're on the same mic now. I can't mute that. But um, All right, well, we're going to take a break. We'll come back, and then we'll take a short break right after. We'll send you to the news and more NFL talk and more right here on the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch. Hi, I'm Avina. I'm seven years old, and I'm blind. I love gymnastics piano, public speaking, and riding on the trail bike with my dad. You can help me live the life I want. Help Ravina and other blind people by making a tax-deductible donation of your used car, truck, or almost anything with wheels to the National Federation of the Blind. Your donation will ensure a brighter future for blind children and adults. Just call 866 282 Seven three two seven. That's eight six six two eight two seven three two seven. Or visit carshelpingtheblind dot com. That's carshelpingtheblind dot com. We will arrange to have the donated vehicle picked up and provide you with a tax deductible receipt. And if you know someone who is blind that can use our help, email nfb at nfb dot org. Blindness does not hold me back at all. Donate today. <laughs> Watch Mohawk Valley Living every Sunday and pick up our free monthly magazine. Inside are stories by local writers, area guides, things to do, and more. Find out today why people are calling it their favorite magazine. Mohawk Valley Living. See what's in it for you. 
If you are a small business owner, it is time to answer these questions. Is your website mobile friendly? Does it look modern and pop? Can it be found on the first page of Google? If you answer no to any of these questions, or worse, you don't have a website, it is time to call our friends at Thayer 2 Design. They'll work with you to customize a website to fit your needs and help you grow. Websites start as low as $400, and yes, you heard that right. A great-looking website doesn't have to cost you thousands of dollars. Give them a call today at 315-875-7989 or visit them online at Rome NY Web Design. Hi, this is Jen Baylog with the American Heart Association. Join us this Saturday, January 31st, for the Rome Run and Walk for the American Heart Association. Registration begins at 8 a.m. at Rome Free Academy. For more information, please call 580-3965 or visit us online at heart.org. At the American Heart Association, we're glad WKAL Radio Cares. Welcome back to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch. Thanks for making us part of your Sunday morning here with the crew. Cody and uh, Coach Medesis in here. Thanks to Coach Nicola for calling in. Hopefully I didn't jinx the weather, and hopefully next Saturday. <laughs> hopefully next Saturday's nice. It's not a torrential downpour. We'll have big problems if it rains because uh, of you. I know. You can blame, you can blame me. Um, so, yeah, so we got a few more minutes before we send you the news at the bottom of the hour. 315 337 Nine five two five is the line to call. Coach Medesa says the Vikings and Saints game on here. It's seven nothing right now, Vikings. And you guys were talking about Kirk Cousins. Cousins plays well. He just doesn't play well on Sunday night prime time or yeah, Monday night or the Monday night, night game. Night Who's the? Uh, is it the Bucks? Chiefs tonight, Sunday night. Yep. Yeah, that should be a good game. Yeah. Do we do we know if? Uh, Brady's got all the receivers back. They're all questionable. Yeah. They're all game time uh, decisions. Saying Evans is I think Evans is going to go. Yeah. Boy, he needs those receivers. He does. They they would have, I think they would have easily beat Green Bay last week if they had those receivers playing. Yeah, yeah well, I'm sure Aaron Rodgers was saying, "Hey, if I had a receiver, if I had Devontae back, I, we'd be winning games too." So, on a college note again, Georgia Tech six days after firing their head coach goes in and beats Pitt, and of all the talk radio shows that I listen to, everybody's saying, and I think I agree with this, and we'll probably talk about it this week is the first phone call I make is to the interim head coach. No. Who? Prime. No. Yes. I mean, that's, yes, that yes. That, well, let me take He's that back. That job. Yes, that is the first fine For phone call Dion I make. in his hometown. I don't think he takes that job, though. I don't either. He, he'll he'll be able I to think recruit I, Georgia. I agree. That is the first phone. I I, I think, I think going it's somewhere the, else with it. I think yes. it's the best possible scenario. If I'm Georgia Tech, yes, oh, hundred percent. I call him up and I say, Dion, who do you want to be the athletic director to come with you? He's not going to get eight nine million dollars. Prime don't need the money, right? He owns Georgia, and I'm telling you right now, Kirby Smart. Does not want to see Deion Sanders go oh. to Georgia Tech. Oh, I agree. I think he'll the the marketing piece. I think he'll get players to go there. He'll win the state of Georgia, and I think being at Jackson State has proved a lot of people that said Deion can't coach. Yep. There's more to what he's doing at Jackson State than just coaching. Yeah. Right. It's it's the other stuff around him. Now give him some NIL money. I think Georgia Tech's a really good fit for Nebraska's not a good fit not for Deion. A, nope, no. I agree. Florida State, Mike Norvell's going to probably survive another year, depending on how they finish. Or let's say Florida State falls apart the second half of the season; they finish under five hundred. If I'm the AD at Florida State, and maybe maybe Dion's waiting for Florida State, I'm calling him up and saying, "Will you come?" Because if you come to Florida State, his son's coming to Florida State with him. Some recruits are going to come to Florida State. Is he waiting for the Florida State job? Yes. Or is he really waiting to see Jackson State compete with some of the Power 5 teams? I think that's, he is. That's, that's the that's other thing. Could be. He doesn't need the money. Right. No. But I just think state of Georgia, from Georgia, played for played for Atlanta, he would be – King in the state of Georgia and yeah. Kirby Smart out of all coaches that can get that tech job. If Dion goes there, it's going to be a big swing for the state of Georgia. Oh, I, I, I agree, but I, like I, like you just said, I don't think that's the job he's looking for because at this point, 
I mean, I think he's just looking for the right job. And if not, you know, he's building the HBCU brand, the, the rep of HBCU schools, and trying to give them publicity and get them mm-hmm. in the, in the mm-hmm. spotlight. So I think part of it is, you know, this is kind of bigger than just getting that next, yeah. that next D1 FCS, FBS job. I think this is about helping, you know, HBCUs as a whole. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and building, you know, you know, I, I don't know if it's the brand is the right word, but building the reputation that, hey, this is a viable option to go to school. And more importantly, this is a viable option to graduate and move on to the NFL. Just think about the brand he could build at Georgia Tech. Well, yeah, I just don't think that's the right fit for him. Yes, it's in Atlanta. It, it, it's, oh, I it just makes think it's a idea. lot of sense, but I just, I don't think, I, I just don't think that's, that's the move that he makes. One of the guys, and I think it was, cause I was listening to, um, Dusty Dvorak and Danny yep. Cannell on yeah. uh, Series 84. Oh, Danny um, my, here, here's my favorite, and I'm going to say this week on the podcast. Um, I, I listen to Chris Childers and Rick Neuheisel, and the rumor has it Rick Neuheisel is interested to come back into coaching. And if you remember, Rick Neuheisel was at Washington and won games there. He won games at Colorado. Um, and then... Um, He's now obviously doing a radio show, but the rumor has it he wants to come back in the coaching. Is there a fit for for Rick Neuheisel somewhere? But one of the guys he was talking to was um, an ACC guy, and I forget who it was that covers the ACC, and he says, I'm not sold on Deion Sanders yet as a coach. I'm sold on him as, you know, a marketing guy. He, he, he's, he could sell a program. Could he win at a Power Five conference? And I'm sitting here saying, well, why couldn't he? Right. If you're a good marketer now, with with all the NIL stuff, you're a good recruiter. If he can get kids to go play at Jackson State, and remember, he said, give me one or two more years to get some depth, because he's got the skill kids that are probably as good as any any team in the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I I think that if he stays over the next two or three years at Jackson State, for all the reasons Nick that you just said. I think he wants to prove that they can beat anybody. I'm interested to see what kind of push he's making because I think, I think like you said, in a year or two, I would not be surprised to see him schedule a bunch of FBS oh, yeah. and try to make a push to see if he can, you know, get in the top 25, get some votes, yeah. kind of like Appalachian State did yep. years ago, kind of like you know those FCS yeah. teams come in and they win, and then all of a sudden they're in the polls and they're and they're trying to. You know, show that they can play at that level. I would not be surprised if that's Dion's next move. But at the same time, if Mike Norvell struggles at Florida State, you know, I I, I know that's the phone call at Georgia down. Tech. But I don't know how Dion says, "Hey, I became prime oh, yeah, in Tallahassee." Yeah. So Coach Prime to Tallahassee, and it's not only the it's 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 the marketing, but it's also Dion's a smart guy. Dion understands that you're only as good as your staff. And the staff that he has at Jackson State rivals a lot of the oh, yeah. top programs across the country. I mean, now call me crazy, but like in Division One football, I've seen it with other coaches, and I'm going to use Mario Cristobal as an example. If you get recruits and you are able to get a good coaching staff, I don't think he's a great coach, Mario Cristobal. But you get great players and a great staff around you, you're going to win games. That's just how it oh, is. Oh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that, except for they got Josh Gaddis from Michigan, and the offense looks yeah, terrible. terrible right now for Miami. Terrible. But 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 that's exactly it. And, and I'll say this about college football is if you are a good recruiter and you can get good talent and you can surround yourself with good coaches. Now, I think I'll give a lot of props to Dion for this is, his assistant coaches are not making a lot of money. Right. They all went there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, to be, to be part of that. And I, and I'll say this is I follow Dion and Jackson State on all the social media sites. If you just see what he's doing on these social media sites, yeah. you don't see these other teams doing what he's doing yep. on there. And I'll tell you what, his son's pretty good. His, his son yeah. is very good. I love to see his son play. Uh, for a power five to see what he can do. He said, well, how come you're not talking about our quarterback here for, you know, the Heisman, the Heisman trophy, mm-hmm. uh, and so forth. So it'll be interesting. But when the guy said to Dion, he's not sold on Dion as a coach, you're crazy. He's, he's not. But I'm telling you, I think, I think if I'm Georgia Tech, I, I come calling, I pick the phone up, I call him and say, who do you want as your athletic director? How much is going to 
Is it going to cost us to get you and bring who you want in here? I think it's a perfect fit for Dion. So keep it locked here when we come back. Aaron Judge still chasing history. He's a part of history, but yes. he's still chasing 62. You know we'll, talk, we'll talk about Aaron Judge and more right after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Talk Radio 1450. With SRN News, I'm Michael Harrington in Washington. More than 120 million Brazilians voting today in a highly polarized presidential election that could determine if the country returns a leftist to the helm of the world's fourth largest democracy or keeps the incumbent in office for another four years. The race pits conservative President Jair Bolsonaro against his political nemesis, leftist former President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva. Authorities in Denmark say the Nord 1 stream natural gas pipeline has stopped leaking the announcement today comes a day after officials say the ruptured Nord Stream 2 pipeline also appears to no longer be leaking. Humanitarian workers say hunger is now soaring in East Congo after fighting between M23 rebels and the army. Uh, uh, nearly 260,000 people, we are told, are facing extreme food insecurity in several territories. This is SRN News. You were lied to in buying a timeshare and worn out, you need my help. Hi, I'm Chuck McDowell, CEO and founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started the timeshare cancellation industry by exposing the ugly truth about timeshare and giving folks the straight facts. I've been fighting the timeshare giants ever since, so no one knows this industry better than me and my team. Today, we have 383 employees and have saved our clients an average of $65,000 in lifetime payments. Imagine putting those timeshare dollars back in your pocket. If you were told in a timeshare presentation that this was available today and today only, that timeshare was a great investment, or your maintenance fees will never go up, call my office now. I guarantee if we take you as a client, we will cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call now for your free information kit. 800-687-7979. 800-687-7979. 800-687-7979. The current temperature, 54 degrees. This is Sports. I'm Ron DeRockstra, Dansby Swanson, and Matt Olson. Homeward off Max Scherzer lifting the Braves to a crucial 4-2 win over the Mets and a one-game lead in the NL East. The defending World Series champions beat aces Jacob deGrom and Scherzer on consecutive nights to take their biggest lead of the season in the division. Meanwhile, Phillies Nationals split a day-night doubleheader. The Nationals route the Phillies 13-4 uh, in the day game and lost the nightcap 8-2. Diamondbacks, meanwhile, eliminate the Giants from postseason contention 8-4. Sergio Alcantara had a pair of two-run doubles, and Christian Walker finished a homer shy of hitting for the cycle. Albert Pujols hit a two-run single. Corey Dickerson had a grand slam in a six-run first inning to help the National League champion St. Louis Cardinals beat the Pittsburgh Pirates 13-3. This is SRN Sports. College football number one, Georgia had to come from behind to beat Missouri 26-22. Bryce Young got knocked out of the game with a shoulder injury in the second quarter. But second-ranked Alabama went to their backups and beat Arkansas 49-26. Ohio State routes Rutgers 49-10. Mayan Williams carried the load for the Buckeyes, rushing for a career-high 189 yards and five touchdowns. Fourth-ranked Michigan scores on four of their first five drives, beat Iowa 27-14. Clemson 30-20 over NC State. Southern Cal beats Arizona State 42-25. Mississippi held off Kentucky 22-19. Jaden Nixon returned the second-half kickoff 98 yards for a touchdown, and ninth-ranked Ohio Oklahoma State beats 16th-ranked Baylor 36-25. Penn State beats Northwestern 17-7. The Nittany Lions defense forcing three turnovers. With SRN Sports, I'm Ron DeRockster. This Atmos weather report is being brought to you by Summit Technology Group. Summit Technology Group provides advanced technical solutions to the ever-evolving broadcast industry. More information is available online at summittechgroup.com. Your area conditions, currently 48 degrees in Rome. Here is your WKAL 1450 AM, 103.3 FM Utica Rome Metro weather forecast for Sunday the second day of October. I'm meteorologist Charles Dixon. Mostly clear in Rome, and good morning to listeners in Oneida, 
where it is currently mostly clear and 48 degrees. Heading down to 33 overnight tonight, Monday's high will be in the low 60s, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures in the mid 60s on Tuesday, sunny times of clouds and sun. A meteorologist, Charles Dixon, on 1450 AM 103.3 FM. WKAL More Stimulating Talk Radio. This is Coach Big C, and you're listening to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch on WKAL 1450. Mo! What the rock is cooking! Welcome back to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch. Thanks for making us part of your Sunday morning here. Cody and Coach Medesis in here. We'll bring you the last half hour of the show. I got to give a shout out to my uncle Paul Eighty, who, uh, longtime coach at Hamilton College yesterday had the scoreboard named after him. So I don't know if Uncle Paul is out there listening, but, uh, congratulations, Uncle Paul. Well deserved. Um, they named the scoreboard after him. Long time. Um, coach there at Hamilton College. So congratulations uh, to Coach uh, and my uncle as well. And, uh, guys, let's get back into, uh, well, I say let's get back in the NFL, but I want to just talk Aaron Judge for just a little bit as he chases uh, to break history. He's part of history now. He hits 61. They'll play today at, at 135 against Baltimore. And uh, I, th- I think we all could probably say when we if we've watched him over the last 10 or 15 days during this chase, obviously the pressure – you, you could tell is he's got it written all over him, but the swing's a little bit different now. It seems like he's got a little bit more uppercut swing to try to hit it out of the, hit it out of the park. Um, I think he'll obviously hit 62. It's a matter of when. But my question is, when he hits 62, do you sit him for a few days and get him some rest? I think you have to, right? I absolutely no. think you have to. No. And I, and I think, and I think you, you make a great point about the swing. I mean, you also got, right now he's got one thing on his mind. He's got to hit number 62. Yeah. So he's yeah. trying every pitch to hit a home run. And you got to get him back to being the MVP that he was all year by not only hitting home runs, but hitting for average. Oh, absolutely. I mean, hitting he still for, is. He still is. Is he though? Because like he said, everything is is power, power, power. He's trying to hit home runs. Yeah. You got to get back to basics. You got to win baseball games. And, and do you see the way these teams are pitching to him? His stat line yesterday: zero for one, a hit by pitch, and four walks. Well, that's what it's going to be all playoffs, though, as well. Yeah. You got a call? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to the phone line. This might looks like it might be my brother-in-law here. Hey, Mike, you're on the air. Yeah, I got a post for you. Let's hear it. Jog my memory. So we're sitting over at uh, your uh, um, Paul and Bobby's there. And he had like the summertime gig there that they normally do. Coach Myers is holding court like over by the beverages there. Yep. He was talking about uh, getting drafted by the Jets. And it's just like real captivating stuff talking to you know, and Everybody was listening and hanging out his every word. He's about being you know, 30. thing about coach Mize when he listened everybody or when he talked everybody everybody listened that's for sure just the voice that he had and you know tons of old stories and I, and I remember that sitting and standing back there listening to him and some of the old coaches tell some stories which was really uh, intriguing to to listen to because they all tell the same stories they just all tell them a little bit a little bit differently um, but yeah no Mike I want to switch I never played for him you know and I always get walking because he would walk away from me and yep Hey, Coach Mines, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> yep, he had that voice, that's for sure. 
Mike, I want to ask you a Michigan question here where we got you on the air. So, so Michigan has, again, people will talk about the schedule, and they can, but they're still finding ways to win. They haven't looked too impressive um, offensively. Blake Corm's, um, I think, doing what we th- all thought he would be doing. He's having a good year running the football. And, and J.J.'s kind of managed the game and hasn't really had to do too much. Are you are you in any panic yet that the offense really hasn't been as explosive yet? Well, I was just hoping to see a little bit more, like, uh, unleashed offense this year. It seems like the play calls they're calling, you know, third and four, let's, like, run the ball again. It's like, you know, it doesn't seem to be, like, real creative so far coming out of that co-offensive coordinator system they got there. And I never really quite understood that. You know, somebody's the running back coordinator and, you know, somebody's the passing game coordinator. That just kind of didn't sit well with me. So it seems like there's no cohesion there in the offense to me, yeah. Um, and that game was really never, like in Dow, I mean, they scored a couple of late touchdowns basically to try to keep it a little bit on us looking. But, yeah, I would have liked to see them unleash J.J. a little bit more when I'm open up the offense because he's, he's dinking and dunking really isn't suiting too well. You know, and I think that's the that's the thing so far. They've they've really um, they really haven't been challenged. And, and listen, I'll give the defense some credit. I think the defense has looked you know really good at times, and I think JJ's managed the game. And I don't think they've had to really utilize him with, to break him out. But I agree with the weapons that they have on offense, especially at the receivers this year. I would love to see more of the of the downfield passing game, creative. Uh, a little bit more creativity with those guys. But, again, the schedule favors them where I think they'll just keep building off. And once they get Cade McNamara back, too, as a backup, right now I don't know if they're trying to be a little cautious the way they utilize J.J. because they don't have Cade back there at quarterback. So, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, like, how he progresses throughout the season. So, we'll definitely see the um, next week Indiana and then I think Penn State the week after that. Yep. So that should uh, if Penn State wins and Michigan wins next week. I would think game day would be looking at a top ten matchup with Michigan top five. Penn unfortunately, State unfortunately, so it would be at home too. So we'll That's see. Syracuse NC State. Yeah, yeah, not happening. Not happening. Well, Mike, we appreciate the call, and I'll uh, we'll catch you later. I'm sure. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. See, you, Mike. Later. They're not going to Syracuse NC no. State. No, they're not. But I just. You'd have a top ten uh, matchup for sure. Get, let me ask you a question: Do you think Michigan? I mean, Michigan knows who they're playing. They're like, they're, out, do you think that Michigan's just not showing any? Like, why would you show any film? I mean, you're playing Maryland, you're playing Iowa. These are games you should win. Leave it for Penn State. Leave it for Michigan State. Oh, I don't disagree. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna open things up. I think they want them to just I get agree. comfortable. Maryland's better. Maryland. It, Maryland's better, but Michigan should beat them. They should. I mean, let's 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 no, be should. honest. They should. Michigan is I a think, legit national yeah. title contender. You're not. You should not be worried no, about Maryland. No, but I think Maryland's better. They they won. They beat Maryland, which they should have. You're 100 percent right. Um, you know, Iowa going there and playing on the road is always a tough place. They they found a way to win. And I'll say this: watching them, you know, against Maryland, and watching a game against Iowa as a Michigan fan, I never felt threatened to say, "Well, Maryland's going to beat them." Iowa's going to beat him. Iowa's offense stinks. Mm-hmm. So you never felt and, and I'm with you. When you look at J.J.'s number since he's been in there, not great. Right. Not bad. Right. He hasn't turned the ball over. I think that J.J. in the past would have been probably throwing a ball downfield more. Now he's just kind of dumping underneath. He's, he's Is he taking what the defense gives him? I don't know. But I saw one of his touchdown passes yesterday where he scrambled to the right. He got out of the pocket, scrambled, made a nice throw in the back of the end zone. But, again, I think you're right. They play Indiana. They should beat Indiana. And then then Penn State comes calling. It's going to be you know a top-10 team, probably both undefeated. Maybe that's when you open up the playbook. I've never been a big fan, as Mike said, the co-coordinators. I, yeah, think, I think, think it's like the NFL stupid. right now with, with the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Who's calling plays? You right. can't have a run game. I mean, yeah. it's like I'm just picturing this as a coach. I'm on a headset, and I'm saying, okay. Um, it's third and one. Mike, who's the run game yeah. player? Mike, what do you got for the next run play? Oh, yeah. hold on. Nick, what do you got? We're going to pass it. Give me a pass. Right. Play. Like, how does that work? Wait, I want to run the ball. I got a great yeah. run play set. Like, it's just. Yeah. Yeah, no. 
So I, I think coaches do that. Um, you know, whether it's to try to get a coach a little bit more money to get, to get mm-hmm. him a coordinator title. Yes. Um, I'm not sure, but I would imagine both guys got more money to be coordinators and maybe Harbaugh didn't want to decide on one. I've never been a big fan of it. I'm hoping because right now to me, um, I know Michigan is, is number four. I don't think they look like the fourth best team in the country, but they're winning. Right. They're winning. So right. I think if you go back and ask Brent Venables at Oklahoma, I don't care if you win 10-7, 10-3, 3 nothing. You, you find a way to win ugly, take Georgia. Yep. Found a way yesterday to come back and beat Missouri, which they trailed most of the game. So I think a win's a win, but I think you're right. I think when they get to Penn State, I think you'll see, I think you'll see them the open offense up. open up a little bit. They might have one of the best wide receiving cores in the country this year, and they really haven't utilized all that. Um, so we'll see. I know that uh, Nick from CBUS is probably going to think otherwise this week. To me right now, the, the games that I've seen, I probably would put Ohio State as the best team in the country. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd say they're they're playing much better than they started. I think they, they struggled a little bit early on. I think they're playing much better where, you know, you look at like Georgia came out of the gates ro- roaring to go. As Cody found out, um, but there—I mean, I don't know if it's just kind of like, "Hey, we're up, we're up on top," you know, we're just kind of looking past people or what. But I mean, they have not played the the same that they they started the last couple of weeks. So they here, think they can coast. I think. So here's the other thing: when you look at college football and you look at, uh, I just pulled up the the rankings from this past week, and obviously there's going to be a lot of changes in this oh, ranking. Yeah. It it seems to me like you take Georgia, Bama, Ohio State, throw Michigan, Clemson into the mix if you want, USC. Tennessee's right there. Well, Tennessee's got a big game coming up um, next week, I believe, right? I think it is it Alabama Bama in next two week? weeks. But really, other than that, it seems like college football this year, there's a lot of good teams. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a lot of great teams oh, great. this year. I mean, Penn State's 4-0. We'll see what they do. I mean, Utah, Oregon, Ole Miss, we're talking about um, – and then it's like everybody else is just well, right you there. you it's almost like you have like the title contenders. Then you have a bunch of teams that are like they're undefeated. The Oklahoma States, the Tennessees. Yep. You know, up until this week, you had Kentucky. You have some one loss teams there. Then you have like Kansas. Mm-hmm. Where does Kansas fit into that? Because they're winning some good games. Do you have some of those teams that are hanging around? Wake Forest has one loss. Where do they fit into this? Oregon got. Destroyed game one. Yep. Everyone complained and said the playoffs is look at this is what the playoff would be like. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, everybody's darling BYU gets blown out. Yep. Maybe they weren't as bad as we thought. Utah. I mean, there's some yep. teams there that can compete. That's why I'm looking forward to this 12 team playoff because I think, I, I think that Georgia Oregon game was like an outlier. I think you're going to get some really good games. Especially in the first round, you still might end up with the same four teams, but if we get five or six more meaningful games where we don't have stars sitting out and have five, twelve games, a great yeah. matchup in the seven, ten, and those are great games. Where if they were in the Liberty Bowl, yeah. are all those yeah. guys going to play? I, I think it helps college football. I'll tell you what, yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. I think this is a year where there's a lot of good non-power five teams. Yeah. I think there's a lot of good non-power five. I mean, Coastal Carolina, I think, is one of them. Uh, we talk about him all the time. I think he's a he's a hell Jamie of a coach. Jamie Chadwell. Yep. Um, yeah. But I think this could be a year, and I don't know why I'm going to say this, but I think there's a team that sneaks in. I think there's a team that's going to sneak in the playoff, and I think it's a team that's going to sneak in and, and make some noise. Because you would probably think that Georgia and Alabama, one of them's going to lose. Yep. Michigan or Ohio State, they're going to play each other, so one of them's going to lose. And I think Michigan, Penn State, I don't think that's a – a definite win for Michigan. We'll see how good Penn State really is. 17-7 winners yesterday over Northwestern. They get a bye this week, too. And so they, they get a bye. Before and they get a bye. So, I mean, we'll see. But Michigan's playing Indiana. They get a bye, too. Yeah. So let's, let's yeah. not read too much into that. But I'm looking. I just pulled up the ACC, and Syracuse is 2-0 and right behind Clemson at yeah. 3-0. and Yeah. Well, things get interesting. Now, now it gets tough. Things get interesting, but, I mean well, – we got we got ten minutes left and we've yet to talk about Tua. Can we can we spend yes, some time yes, before? I, I don't want to forget about that because nope, that was the big news from the week. And I'm not saying it because they beat the Bills, but doctor it, gets fired, the scapegoat. Yep. I th- do. You, do you think it's got to go back to the coach, the organization? 
they have to just completely. It's on everybody. I I, I think a five year old kid watching the game could see that something was wrong yeah. with Tua, and I think at some point you got to understand that it's more than just the one game, and every competitor. I mean, I, I'll ask you. You you are playing baseball. You know, if you got hurt and they said, do you want to go back in? Whether you're hurt or not, 99% of the time you're saying, yeah, get me back. I'm yeah, okay. Exactly. I'll shake it off. You know, I'm fine. That's where the coaches, I mean, it's it's different now than it used to be. I heard an interesting take, and I think this is really, you know, this is interesting when you listen to this. And it was, um, I think it was Ryan Clark okay. um, on his podcast, The Pivot, that I listened to as well. He said the guys in the NFL know the protocol. I heard this too. In the questions that they're going to get asked, and they purposely get low scores. Yes, they they know yes. how to answer those questions. Yes. So again, I'm not saying that that's what Tua did because when you saw, you know, all you see is the the fingers, you know, crumbling and all that. And I mean, thankfully, it wasn't as bad as what it looked like on right. TV. But he, I thought that's an interesting take because if you're in the NFL and you know. You know what the questions you're going to ask, and you answer them that way. Mm-hmm. Doctor's going to put you in. Absolutely. But when he came off that field, not this week, but the week before against Buffalo. Sunday, yep. When he was walking and fell over, that's not a back injury. No. no. Like, and you're stumbling around, and then they put him back in the game. That's horrible. I, I think the head coach, I think whether it's the GM or whoever in that organization, whether you want to fine them or suspend them, something something needs to be done. I I, I agree. I think the hammer's got to be done. Like you need to, if you're the NFL, you got to set an example. And I, I mean, I, and again, I'm not saying this because they're the Dolphins and they. Uh, no, it, it doesn't matter who the team is. Like nope. you have to take care of the players. And again, you asked Tua in that big of a game early in the season if he wants to go in. Of course, he's yeah. going to say yes. Yeah, any competitor yeah. would. Say Everyone's yes. going to say yes. But we also got to understand it's week four. Another I mean, enough. An- another reason why, if young kids watch that game, and parents are watching that game, another reason why kids don't come out and want to play football. Yeah, he should have never been in the game. Period. He should have yes. never even played. Now I don't know how long he's out for. Um, now, well, did they say anything? They're saying they're but. saying it's going to be a while, but I mean, he could not. Uh, there's a chance that he doesn't, you know, get back this year. I mean, you're mortgaging your future yep. for a half of football in week three. Yeah, with the way he's played, that's your team. I mean, you need him. And they have weapons. That's the thing. Oh, they yeah, they have they, weapons. The best, you could argue the best in the NFL. So I want to just go back real fast. We got a few minutes, and and, and I want to talk because. When we talked about Syracuse, the predictions, your predictions look much better than all of ours, but I had them five. Not necessarily. I had them five and seven. We've been down this road before where they start well and don't win another game, so let's not go crazy. But this is the the piece where you even said it. You said they could realistically go five and oh, Mm -hmm. and here they are five and oh, and I'm just looking at the schedule. They get the bye week, and now they'll go NC State, Clemson, Notre Dame, Pitt, FCU. FSU. FSU. And Boston College. I mean, realistically, like, if I was picking... Don't Boston forget that Boston College, College game at the end of the year. In Wake. I'm, yep. I'm saying they're 8-4 and four at the end of the year. Like, that's my realistic prediction, honestly, at this that, point. I, I mean, I think that was realistically what I was looking to do, and I just kind of got caught off. And I'm like, yeah, they're going to win that game, too. I think 8-4 and four is kind of the realistic thing. Could they lose 7 straight? They could lose... Six of those games. They're not going to lose to Boston College. They could lose six of those games. I'll tell you what. If if Syracuse loses seven games in a row, I will be outside of of uh, the Listen, AD's office. BC with played a better. Sign. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Pitt lost to Georgia. Yep. I mean, here's the thing. We looked at the schedule in the beginning of the year, and we said Pitt's a top 25 team. Yep. NC State's a top 10 team. Yep. Clemson's very good. Notre Dame's a, what were they, top yeah. six or five? Five or yeah. they were a top team in the country. Wake was very good, but we didn't know what Hartman. You know, we didn't yeah. know where Florida State. What Florida State are you getting? Because they stunk last year. Yep. You know, it was. I think you, you look at the schedule now and you're saying, all right, mm-hmm. NC State's a top ten team, probably going to drop to yep. fifteen or so. But they haven't looked as good as no. everybody hyped them no. up to be. And it's home. So that's and and it's a home game. Um, you hope people come out to that game. Then you go, okay, Clemson, 
Yep. We're one of the few teams that plays Clemson tough. You know, but it's in Clemson. But it's in Clemson, which we've played tough there as well. Um, Notre Dame doesn't look like the same no. Notre Dame team. They're down playing to their second better. string quarterback, but they are playing better. Yep. But Notre Dame gets Clemson the following week, so do they start looking ahead to that game. Yeah. Um, and then you got Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, there's, they seem like they're not very consistent. Mm-hmm. They've lost two games now. I mean, Pickett's not that I mean, back at quarterback. You're kind of talking like a nine and three, ten and two finish. No, 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 no. I still think nine and three is too high. I still think eight and four is probably the number. That's and I think, I think eight and four, I mean, eight and four means they go what, three and four down the stretch? Yeah. And again, could they go nine and three and go four and three? Again, four and three down the stretch. So is here's not... what I can really see. I, I'm going to give them a fighting chance to beat NC State at home. I think I think they can beat NC State. I think State. it's gone it's from a yeah. 75, 25 yep. to more of a 60, 40 yep. NC I agree. State. Clemson's tough at home. It's a loss. Let's. Let, it'll be a close game, but it's a loss. Notre Dame, I think they'll, I think they can play with Notre Dame. I'm gonna I'm, say that. I'm taking Notre Dame in that one. I think they honestly. can beat Pitt. I think they can beat Florida State. I think, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna say, it's a loss to NC State. It's a loss to Clemson. It's a win against Notre Dame. It's a win against Pittsburgh. It's a win against Florida State. It's a loss to Wake, and it's a win to BC, and that's their nine and three. If they lose to Notre Dame, they they go well, eight and four, so and again they, that's a good year. So nine and three, eight and four, they're gonna they probably would get a good bowl game. Yeah, you'd be ta- you'd be talking about yeah. a pretty decent yeah. bowl. Yeah, probably going back to Yankee Stadium to play in the Pinstripe Bowl. Just like every time here. Well, if, I think if they're a top three finish in the ACC, I think they get um, that New Year's week. Could be. So you could be getting a New Year's you know I mean, a that New would, Year's bowl. That would be that would be nice. Um, but again, a lot depends on. You know, the health of this team. Because now Tucker's gone down twice this year. I mean, Schrader, Schrader was 17 of 17 last night. Uh, Tucker ran for 230 and they're still in the game, which makes no sense. Um, but again, Tucker goes down the whole, you change everything. Schrader goes down, change yeah, everything. Yeah. So again, they could be just as easily six and six. And again, it's a better year than most people predicted. Well, I guess it's probably safe to say that Dino's going to keep his job? Unless they lose seven straight, then I'm outside picketing. You think if that were to happen, I'll they go five and seven, he's out? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they'll talk. I don't see it happening. They're, How do you not? They're, they're yeah. a lot better. And, and I, I've been more impressed. Defense. With the defense. Yes. Defensively, they're one of the best defenses in the ACC. I mean, the offense is the question. Like, when you're playing Notre Dame, they're a defensive team. That's, that's a tough game because you have to score. Well, I, team's gonna score. I, I think a lot of the the season's going to come down to Schrader throwing the ball. Exactly. You know, if he throws and plays like he did against against Purdue or against Virginia, yep. where he didn't play you're great, good. you're in trouble. I but think, if he plays against the way he played against Louisville, or again, it's Wagner, but I mean, seventeen of seventeen is still seventeen of seventeen. Yeah, he 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 made all the throws. I mean, they can compete with those teams. Because their offense can move the ball yeah. and their defense can stop I you. Mean, that Notre Dame game, scary, that's a tough one because Notre Dame, like I said, is a defensive team. Schrader's going to get different looks. You know, he's got to not turn the ball over. Like that's huge. Well, I just say that I think Notre Dame's playing better. I mean, I just think it's it's still Notre Dame. So historically, exactly. it's Notre Dame. You know, Syracuse, which on paper you but, say Notre Dame but, should win that but game. But Syracuse has beaten Notre Dame before. Oh, they've yeah. they've won at Notre Dame Stadium. Syracuse might be favored. And, and again, I'm, I, I, you can't overlook the fact that they play Clemson the next week. You know, if you're looking ahead and saying, "Oh, we got a Syracuse team that's probably lost two games in a row," or you got that Clemson game coming up, we're going to start hyping up that Clemson game. I would like to see. And we only got a minute here. I would like to see Syracuse still run the ball better I, with agree. Tucker. I would like to see them run the ball better with him, which I think will continue to open up the passing game. But listen, if you're Syracuse fans and you're out there listening. I think you take five and zero. Oh. I know there's a lot of teams in the country that would love to be five and zero. Oh. And I think come Monday morning when the top twenty five comes out, I think they're in the top twenty. Yeah, I I, I think they're twenty twenty one in the AP in the yep. in the USA Today. They'll definitely be yep. top twenty. Yep. All right. Well, listen. Make sure to tune in next Thursday night at eight o'clock for the for the college football show. The No Huddle Podcast returns for a, another episode. We'll start at 8 o'clock with the guys. We'll be back here next Sunday morning from 9 to 11. So on behalf of the entire crew, the Statman, Coach Medesis, Pags, myself, and Cody, 
We'll see you next Sunday right here on the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch on WKAL Talk Radio, 1450. We're out. I want to get my girl some diamond earrings, but I don't know the first thing about diamonds. I was pretty clueless, too, but I got Sue's engagement ring at Engelbert's Jewelers. They're the diamond authority. They help me every step of the way. At Engelbert's Jewelers, we can answer every question. Talk Radio, 1450 AM, 103.3 FM, WKAL, Rome, Utica, Syracuse, New York. Time now.